Hey, yo, Pudgy, can I get an hour, hour? Hour, hour. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Hour, hour. <laughs> What does it sound like from your end? Oh, you're gonna see it because it's recording. <laughs> yes. Alright, we'll be reading The Three Little Men in the Wood. <clears throat> there was once a man whose wife was dead and... Okay, we're already starting. I've got that. As the first <laughs> line. There was once a man whose wife was dead and a woman whose husband was dead. All right, starting off strong. The man wow. had a daughter and so had the woman. The girls were well acquainted with each other and used to play together in the woman's house. One day, the woman said to the man's daughter, Listen to me, tell your father that I will marry him. <laughs> you fat man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 just, uh. <laughs> and then you shall have milk to wash in every morning and wine to drink. And my daughter shall have water to wash in and water to drink. Mm, sometimes both. The girl went <laughs> home and told her father that the woman said, the man said, that the woman had said, the man said, uh... Uh, the man said, what shall I do? Marriage is a joy and also a torment. At least as he, as he could come to no conclusion, he took off his boot and shoved it firmly up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> he took off his boot and said to his daughter, Take this boot. It has a hole in it. <laughs> Go up with it into the loft, hanging it on the big nail, and pour water on it. If it fold, if it holds water, I will come in, I, I will, I do well. <laughs> the girl did as she was told and put the water and held to the hole to the gather guy, the fuck guy. So she went and told her father how it was, and he went up to see with his own eyes, and there was no mistake about it. He went to the widow and courted her, courted her, oh, courted her, and then they had the wedding. The next morning, when the two girls awoke, there stood by the bedside of the man's daughter milk to wash in and wine to drink. Uh, m milk to wash. I read that right. Yeah, the milk to wash in. Hmm. Wait, milk? Yeah, milk. All right. And by the bedside of the woman's daughter, there stood water to wash in and water to drink. Ah. On the second morning, there stood water to wash in and water to drink for both of them alike. On the third morning, there stood water to wash in and water to drink for the man's daughter, and milk to wash in and wine to drink for the woman's daughter. And so it remained ever after. The woman hated her stepdaughter and never knew how to treat her badly enough from one day to another. And she was jealous because her stepdaughter was pleasant and pretty. And her real daughter was an ugly bitch. <laughs> was ugly and hateful. Once in winter, when it was froze when it was freezing hard and snow lay deep on the hill and valley, the woman made a frock out of paper, called her stepdaughter and said, Here, put on this frock. Go out into the woods and fetch me a basket of strawberries. I have a great wish for some. Oh dear, said the girl. There are no strawberries to be found in winter. The ground is frozen and the snow covers everything. And why should I go to the pa why should I go in paper frocks? It is so cold outside and the doors that one's breath is even frozen. The wind will blow through it and the thorns will tear it right off. How dare you contradict me, you little bitch, cried the stepmother. Be off and don't <laughs> let me see you again. <laughs> Tell you, till you bring me a basket of strawberries. Then, 
She gave her a little piece of hard bread and said, That will do for you to eat during the day. And she thought to herself, She is sure to be frozen and starved to death out of the doors and I shall never set eyes on this old bitch again. So the girl went, uh, <laughs> that's a word. The girl went, oh, bendy, the, oh, obediently. I'm fucking retarded. Put on the paper frock and started out with the basket. The snow was lying everywhere, far and wide, and there was not a blade of grass to be seen. When she entered the woods, she saw a little house with three little men peeping out. I thought it said peeing out, but it's peeping. <laughs> Three little men peeping out of it. She wished them good day and knocked modestly at the door. They called her in and she got to flip the page. Now. And she came into the room and sat down by the side of the oven to warm herself and eat her breakfast. The little the little man said, "Give us some of it." Willingly and swear and swerved. Oh, oh, answered. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Willingly answered she, wow. breaking a little piece off of the bread and to give half to them. What are you doing here in the woods this winter time? In your little thin frock. Oh, answered she, I have to get a basket of strawberries and I must not go home without them. When she had eaten her bread, they gave her a broom and told her to go sweep to go sweep the snow away from the back door. When she had gone outside to do it, the little men talked among themselves about what they should do for her. As she was so good and pretty and had shared her bread with them. Then the first one said, she shall grow prettier every day. The second said, each time she peeks a piece of gold, or each time she speaks a piece of gold shall fall from her mouth. And the third said, A king shall come and take, uh, take her for his wife. In the meanwhile, the girl was doing as the little men had told her, and had cleared the snow from the back of the little house. And what to do you suppose she found? Fine ripe strawberries showing dark red against the snow! Then she joyfully filled her little basket full, thanked the little men, shook hands, sucked their cocks, and with them, they ran home in haste to bring her, <laughs> to bring her stepmother the, the thing she longed for. As she went in and said, Good evening! A piece of gold fell from her mouth at once. Then she related... Wait, then she related all that had happened to her in the wood. And at each word that she spoke, gold pieces fell out of her mouth. So that soon they were scattered all over the room. Just look at that. Just look at her pride and content. Cried the stepsister, throwing money about in this way. But in her heart she was jealous just because of it. And wanted to go to and wanted to go into the woods to fetch strawberries. But the mother said, "No, my dear little daughter, it is too cold. You will be frozen to death." But she left with no peace. She left her with no peace. So at least the mother gave in and got. Uh, at least mother gave in. And, uh, I lost my place. Uh, at least the mother gave in and got her a splendorful fur coat and um, to put on and gave her bread butter, cakes, and knickknacks to eat on the way. The girl went into the woods and walked straight up to the little house. The three little men peeped out again, but she gave them no greeting, and without looking around or taking any notice of them, she came stumping into the room, sat herself down by the oven, and began to eat her bread and butter and cakes. Give us some of that, cried the little man. But she answered, I've not, I've not enough for myself. How can I give away any? When she had done with her eating, they said, Here is a broom. Go sweep all, all clean by the back door. Oh, go and do it yourself, answered she. I'm not your housemaid. But 
When she saw that they were not going to give her anything, she went out to the door, and then the three little men said, isn't, and has such a wicked, jealous heart, grudging everybody everything. The first one said, she shall grow uglier every day. The second one said, each time she speaks, a toad shall jump out of her mouth at every word. The third said, she shall die a miserable death. <laughs> <laughs> I like that yeah. guy. <laughs> that third guy has no fucking chill at all. <laughs> the girl was looking outside for strawberries, but as she found none, she went sulkily, 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 sulkily. I'm just gonna say softly. She went softly home, and directly she opened her mouth to tell her mother what had happened to her in the wood. A toad sprang out of her mouth at each word, so that everyone who came near her was quite disgusted. The stepmother became more and more set against the man's daughter whose beauty increased day by day and her got a effect flip the page and her only thought was how to do her some injury so at least she took a kettle set it on fire and scalded some yarn in it when it was ready she hung it over the poor girl's shoulders and break a hole in the ice there to rinse the yarn she obeyed and went and hewed a hole in the ice and as she was about as she was about there came by a splendid coach in which the king sat the coach stood still and the king said my child who art thou and what art thou doing she answered i'm a poor girl and i am rinsing yarn when the king felt pity for her and as she saw that she was very beautiful he said Will you go with me? Oh yes, with all of my heart, answered she, and she felt very glad to be out of the way of her mother and sister. So she stepped into the coach and went off with the king, and when they reached his castle, the wedding was celebrated with great splendor, as the little men in the woods had foretold. At the end of the year, the young queen had a son, and as the step mother had heard of her great good fortune she came with her daughter to the castle as if merrily to pay the king and queen a visit one day when the king had gone out and when nobody was about the bad woman took the queen by the head and her daughter took her by the heels and dragged her out of the bed and threw her out of the window into a stream that flowed beneath it then the old woman put her ugly daughter in the bed and covered her, f covered her up, cover her, uh, cover, goddamn, covered her up to her chin. All right. Wow. When the king came back and wanted to talk to his wife, a little the old lady cried, "Stop! Stop! She is sleeping nicely. She must be kept quiet today." The king dreamt of nothing wrong and came again the next morning as she as he spoke to his wife and answered him there jumped out time out there jumped out each time out of her mouth a toad instead of the piece of gold as there foretold why that should be and the old woman said it was because of her great weakness and that it would be would pass away but in the night, the boy who slept in the kitchen saw how something in the likeness of a duck swan swam up to the gutter and said, My king, what makest thou sleepeth sleepy God? My king, what makest thou sleepest thou or wakest thou? Jesus! What? But there was no answer. Then it said, What cheer my two guests keep they? So the kitchen boy answered, In bed all soundly sleep they. It asked again, And my little baby, how does he? And he answered, He sleeps in his cradle quietly. Then the duck took the shape of the queen and went to the child and gave him to drink. Smoothed. 
his little bed, covered him up again, and then, in the likeliness of a duck, swam back down the gutter. In this way, she came two nights, and on the third, she said to the kitchen boy, Go and tell the king to brandish his sword three times over on me on the threshold. On the threshold. Then the kitchen boy ran and told the king, and he came with his sword and brandished it three times over the duck. And at the third time his wife stood before him living and hearty and the sound at war. The king was greatly rejoiced, but he hid the queen in the chamber until the Sunday came, when the child was to be baptized. And after the baptism, he said, what does that person, gotta flip the page again, and to be rolled in it down <laughs> a hill into water. Then said the king, you have spoken your own sentence. And he ordered a cast to be fetched, and the old woman and her daughter were put into it. The top hammer down, and the cast was rolled down the hill and into the river. The end. Yeah, yeah, yeah the ending was pretty yeah, gnarly. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I want to see. Some fucked up shit like that. So they basically just put her in a barrel uh, filled with nails and just <laughs> pushed them down a hill. <laughs> What a gruesome way to go. <laughs> yeah. That was a nice one. Good lord. Mm -hmm.